Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron. Today we're going to look at the corruption of early New Testament biblical manuscripts. So thanks for being here. We're so thankful you are. And this is coming from TexasReceptusBibles.com. A lot of great information on here. And you ought to just go there and check out the veracity of the information. So here's the thing. We learned yesterday from quotes from Origen, Arrhenius, especially Origen, that the manuscripts he possessed around 200 AD by his own mouth were already corrupted. And so we'll go Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Thanks for being here. The oldest extant manuscripts, those from before the 5th century AD, 400s, which the Nestle's All and United Bible Society's 5th edition scholars rely on as reliable, are all from Egypt, the place where Origen observed the corruption of manuscripts. Codex Sinaiticus, which now a lot of people think it's from the 1840s now. Codex Alex Drynus, Alexandria, Egypt, which is actually basically Textus Receptus Byzantine in the Gospels. Unsheel, or big lettered 0220 Cairo, Egypt. Codex Vaticanus, Alexandria, Egypt, but now there is some doubt that it may be something from the 10th century. But anyhow, Unseal 0162, which is Amsi Rinkus, Egypt, which that's a, I've done a lot of like podcast on biblical archaeology day with Steve Waldron on Oxy Rinkus. And the Unshield 0206, Oxy Rinkus, Egypt, Amherst Papyri, Egypt, of Bodmer Papyri, Papu, Egypt. That's from Martin Bodmer. He's one of the three great manuscript collectors, along with John Rylands. And Chester Beatty. It's not Warren Beatty. Chester Beatty Papyri Fayum or Afrotatopolis, Egypt. The Michigan Papyri, Egypt. Oxyrhynchus Papyri, Oxyrhynchus, Egypt. The Rylands Papyri, Egypt. And then Miscellaneous Papyri, such as all these will be P's for Papyri. By the way, you can get a copy, a facsimile copy of all the Papyri manuscripts. Phil Comfort has that. And now it's a two volume book. It used to be one. Or there's websites you can go to. What is it? Institute for New Testament Research, I think by Dan Wallace and some other places have this. But P2, P4, P6, 7, 8, 12, 14, 25, 33. 58, 34, 35, 36, 40, 41, 43, 44, 48. I'm surprised this world is not saying hike, hike. Uh, P49, 50, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 59, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 5, 8, 76, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 88, 89, 92. Those are all from Egypt all from Egypt. And he's got a great little map of where Christian areas were and all of this. And uh, we could discuss that map. We won't. Early churches spanned across the Roman Empire from Carthage to Antioch to Cappadocia to Rome to Spain. In fact, Egypt did not receive any of the autographs from the apostles. Now, some think Mark was a bishop of Alexandria. Thus, in reconstructing the Greek New Testament text, it is erroneous to focus predominantly on Egyptian witnesses just by the virtue of them being the oldest. Since early churches were isolated because of persecution, it's questionable to assume that readings found in the 2nd and 4th century Egyptian manuscripts are universally accepted readings of all the churches from the 2nd and 4th centuries. <coughs> I tell you who really deconstructed that argument was Wilbur Pickering in the identity of the New Testament text. You can still get that book, and it's a great book put out by Thomas Nelson in the 70s. It's Thomas Nelson was kind of always real pro-Textus Receptus, even though they came out of the New King James, which was still basically Textus Receptus, basically, except in the notes. Early churches could not even agree on the books of the canon, so what basis there to presume that they had textual uniformity, and there's a lot you could discuss there. Unshiel 0212 um, is the earliest non-Egyptian biblical manuscript found. It's a third century manuscript of the Diatessaron, which is by Tatia in the Harmony of the Gospels. It was found in the ruins of the ancient Roman Empire. 
Now, there is manuscript evidence that churches outside of Egypt used a different text type during the early years. Early church writers did this as well, and that's what William Dean Burgon in his 85, 86,000 quotations of early church writers showed that a bunch of them were using Byzantine text types. So, but this is Kurt and Barbara Allen talking. A fragment of Tatian's Tesseron in Greek, the Expository Times, uh, 1935, according to Allen's classification, Uncio 0212 is not of the Alexandrian text type. And again, that's Kurt and Barbara Allen who kind of lead the biblical manuscript there in uh, repository in Munster, Germany. I think he also concluded like that the early church was a uh, modalistic monarchian or something along those lines. So this is a 200s AD manuscript, Uncio 212. Some representatives of the Western text type apparently made their way to Egypt. This is significant because the Western type and the Byzantine type share many similarities in having longer variants in comparison to the Alexandrian type. As is evident from later manuscripts and quotes by Western fathers such as Irenaeus, Tertullian, and Cyprian, which I don't like the term fathers, the Western type because of Jesus saying that. Western type was the text of the Western Roman Empire. The following early manuscripts found in Egypt represent the Western type. Kurt and Barbara Allen, 1981, pages 159 to 162. So P48, P69, P38, and O171. I feel like I'm talking about Walther's or something. So P48 and P69 are from the 200s, P38 from the 300s, O171 from the 300s. The fact that churches outside of Egypt use a non-Alexandrian text as early as the 3rd century should caution us from equating the earliest extant Alexandrian text with the earliest text of the Man New Testament, especially when Origen in 200 or so AD said all his manuscripts basically in the Gospels, or many of them were corrupt. The only conclusion we can logically make from the evidence of Alexandrian manuscripts is that the Alexandrian church in Egypt used the Alexandrian text type. There's not a shred of manuscript evidence that churches elsewhere used the Alexandrian text type. That's why it's called Alexandrian. It was found there, just there, basically. The one manuscript from outside of Egypt prior to the 5th century, Codex 0212, uh, which a manuscript is a little different than papyri. Uh, proves the contrary. If critics wish to establish that the Byzantine text type supplanted the Alexandrian text type after the 5th century, the burden of proof is on these critics to show that the Alexandrian text type was ever considered the standard text prior to the 5th century in the regions where the Byzantine text type was used. This has never been proven. So they need to say, hey, the Alexandrian text type was everywhere, not just isolated in Egypt, because you know churches were everywhere, like in Turkey with a 60,000 <laughs> uh, person church, you know, from the 100s AD discovered underground and stuff like that. So you have the Vaticanus, which has the diocritical marks, which if it is in fact from the 300s AD, it's showing that Byzantine uh, readings existed because the diacritical marks were saying, hey, this is another reading and it's Byzantine readings many times, and early church writers. Now, I've been confronted time after time by very intelligent people with circular reasoning, saying, well, I know these papyri and all these things appear to be Byzantine, but since the Byzantine text type wasn't created till the Lucian Reception or uh, somebody else, that it couldn't be. So they're just aberrant Alexandrian readings. That makes no sense at all. So God bless you. God has preserved his word all around the world um, in various places and currently in the King James Version in English. We could discuss other translations, which we do on a fairly regular basis. God bless. We love you. Bye-bye.